Hey everyone, I've had this desktop vacuum former for many years now, but I don't get to use it as often as it really deserves. This is quite a great machine and it is very affordable for what it does. A while back, somebody approached me to ask about vacuum forming some custom packaging for some action figures that they were designing and actually 3D printing themselves. They were doing kind of a small limited run batch of these figures and they wanted some custom packaging vacuum formed. I thought this would be a great opportunity to show off this machine and to also show off how we use 3D printing for vacuum forming. So let's get into it. So this is the vacuum form DT2. It's a pretty amazing machine given the price point. It has always worked for me flawlessly straight out of the box. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. The material we're going to use for the molds is Formlabs' high temp resin. This material is really good for any kind of mold making application. The resin can withstand over 240 degrees Celsius, so it's kind of perfect for vacuum forming applications. I've actually used standard resins with success for vacuum forming, but they don't last quite as long as a high temp resin mold would. Now, in this case, the customer has actually designed the mold himself. I gave him a couple of tips here and there. There was some back and forth on wall thickness, shelling out the part, adding ribs for stiffness, adding vent holes, draft angles, etc., etc. It's relatively straightforward to design a mold. You kind of just take the negative of your actual part. And there are a lot of great design guides online. Make You has a short write-up, but my favorite is design guide from Universal Plastics. This design guide is really detailed and basically covers everything you need. I think there's also a design guide by Formec, which is a pretty big, well-known industrial vacuum forming company, but these design guides should really have everything you need to get started. After the print finished, we popped it off the build platform and removed the supports. In hindsight, I probably should have worn safety glasses. High temp resin is brittle and will absolutely stab you in the eye if you're unlucky. I wiped off any leftover resin that the wash missed and then sanded the support areas. I also noticed that a few vent holes were plugged, so I drilled them out by hand. Finally, the parts went into a heated UV cure to reach peak thermal performance, and they're ready to go. Before vacuum forming, we spray mold release onto the molds, otherwise the parts can get permanently stuck. Then I apply some low-tack double-sided tape to the bottom just to keep the mold from shifting. I snap the 1mm clear PETG sheet into place and set the temperature. The vacuum form has preset programs for different materials and thicknesses, so there's no need to mess around with settings. It uses a non-contact infrared sensor to monitor temperature, and once the sheet reaches the right heat, it automatically engages the vacuums so you can pull the plastic down. You can actually watch the plastic sag as it heats up as well. If you've done this a lot, you can often judge the perfect moment to pull just by eye. We repeated the process for the second mold and checked the quality. That one had some webbing in the corners, probably due to the mold's aspect ratio and inadequate draft angle. Sometimes you can fix this by tweaking the temperature or using tools to help shape the plastic during the pull. And that's something that we actually had to do to fix that problem. Lowering the temperature solved the webbing issue, so we just repeated the process for the rest of the batch. I'm wearing a respirator, even with good shop ventilation, just as an extra safety step since heating plastic can release fumes. Once the forming was done, we trimmed the sheets to size using the laser cutter. Here are the final assembled parts. They turned out great, and the whole process was pretty straightforward. We sent the final parts to the customer, and they were kind enough to share some photos and video of the final product. It's always awesome seeing the project fully assembled, and I really appreciate when customers take the time to share their results. It turned out amazing. So that was a fun little project that ended up using three of my machines to make these parts. And it's really neat to see when multiple different machines or manufacturing processes go into making one part more efficiently. 3D printing is really transformational for traditional processes like vacuum forming and creation of molds. It really just speeds up the entire process and makes the whole thing much more agile. 
And it was really neat to see that the custom figurines themselves are actually 3D printed. I hope you learned something about vacuum forming and 3D printing while watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe. Otherwise, see you next time.